What's up YouTube? Okay, so as a continuation of the last video on how to make uh, monophonic tracks on the SEQ12, today we're gonna see how to make polyphonic tracks, how to input notes and chords and record some automation using an external synthesizer with a built-in keyboard. Okay, just as a note, soft through has to be turned off in the uh, synthesizer if it's got that option. And the same here on the SEQ12, we need to make sure that through is set to off, so there's no uh, MIDI loops and feedback between the two machines. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is uh, in jam mode, we're gonna unmute, activate track number two, then we're gonna press sequence, and the sequence number one on track two. We can know we are on the right sequence by analyzing this polyphonic mode. Track two, sequence one. Okay, now, if we wanted just to input individual notes, we would do it here in note. But in order to input a chord, we need to go into the third function button, which is chord for this polyphonic track. Now, at any given moment, we can enter a chord by pressing play and record. The locator bar will be moving around and at any given time we can just select a chord. In this case I'm going to play a C minor. And like we can see, we've got recorded our first chord. So let's say we want to enter a chord on a specific steps on this sequence and we don't want to do it like live. No? So for that we will have the sequence has stopped and then we will press record. And now by using this navigation, we can move through the different steps. Once we are on a step that we want, we could first have a root note. Second, I will input here the, the chord on that step being played again from the keyboard. So I'm gonna choose a higher octave. Okay, now we stop record, press play. Okay, so we've got two chords now playing that we've recorded in two different ways. Of course, at any given time now, we could come here and manually shift these notes or enter more notes in that chord, okay. So, the same that we can input the chords or the notes by selecting the step, uh, the only way we can do that though is actually by having record engaged. If we don't have it, we will just sc scroll through different sequences, okay? But by pressing record, now we can move between steps. So let's say we want to input a certain amount of controller data in the step. We've got it selected, then we will go to move the value, the slider, in this case the cutoff, to the desired amount of modulation. This is really handy and visual to record a specific controller amount on that specific step. However, the cool thing starts when we play the automation to create different curves, okay? So for that we press play and record. And now we can move and have that, the, the value automated okay really handy and visual way of recording the external controllers without having to dive into manuals MIDI implementation charts and so on okay another really cool thing that we can do with the sequencer is uh, let's say that we create now a third track for that we're going to unmute or activate track number three going back into jam mode and now we're gonna press sequence and select sequence number one in track three, okay? Track three, sequence number one. I'm gonna make sure that we've got through set to off, the type of track is going to be polyphonic, channel two, MIDI output number two. Okay, so that's correct. And now, what we can do in here is select this track and set a different subdivision level so it's longer than the sequence we just created before. 
So I'm going to that at a clock subdivision four, which means that this sequence is gonna be four times lower than the track we just created before, which is called standard clock subdivision, okay? Now, since we've got this track with the same exact settings, track three, that track two, we're going to effectively be controlling the same channel, obviously, no? But what happens is that apart from being able to, for example, create a different step length, like on the sequence, instead of 16, let's say 12, and subdivision, we can create really interesting polyrhythms, okay, with notes. But in this case, I'm not gonna be sending more notes. What I'm gonna be using this track is as a ghost track, let's say, where we're not going to be sending notes, but we're going to be sending MIDI control changes values to here. By doing that, we've got twice the amount of controllers we can send to the synthesizer. Um, by being on a different track subdivision, we can do interesting morphing uh, features with those parameters since some of them are going to be controlled faster or slower that will create interesting evolving results. So same process than before, I'm going to, for this example, I'm going to select control 2 and I'm going to be selecting a different parameter for this example. I'm going to be automating the resonance, okay? Same process done before. I'm gonna press play and record. And now I'm going to move the resonance slowly. slowly. Okay, it's a combination here. What I'm gonna do is stop press record I'm gonna go to those first steps and I'm going to enter the values here manually okay so now as we can hear that resonant automation is being slower than this other automation that we did before with the cutoff, okay? Okay, so I think that's it for this video. Uh, the next one will be about drum tracks and the differences between polyphonic and monophonic. So hope you liked the video and you found it interesting. Please subscribe if you find that, that it was useful for you because it really helps me. And uh, if you have any questions, please uh, leave them on the comments below. See you in the next one.